The system will take everything from you, and when it's done, it will discard you. The politicians will say they feel sorry for you. The media will write stories about you. The businessmen will sell you synthetic heroin to make you feel better. But nobody will actually do anything to help you. We are a nation of mercenaries. It is dog eat dog, every man for himself. You know this. This is how it always was. It is our greatest strength and most harrowing weakness. Social Darwinism is the only true God here. You are on your own. Be wary of trusting the conventional wisdom that has led so many others astray. If you want to truly understand the American worker's plight, watch the movie Born on the Fourth of July. It documents what it was like to be a Vietnam vet, how as young men there was a tremendous amount of societal pressure to be the American military hero, to serve your country for a higher ideal, how the government portrayed the fight as a noble battle between the forces of good and evil. These belief systems coerced young men by the tens of thousands. They wanted to make the world a better place, they wanted to make mom proud, but society was wrong and the government was lying. Instead, these men were left traumatized with the things they had done and the things that had happened to them. It didn't take long for everyone to give up on the war, but by then it was too late. We had sunk too much into it to turn back. Nobody wanted to admit we had made a mistake, so we kept at it for years, even after it was so clearly a lost cause. People stopped volunteering, so the system drafted thousands more against their will under threat of imprisonment. But we lost. It was all for nothing. And when the vets got home, they were broken psychologically destabilized, limbless, and paralyzed. And the system that had coerced them left them to die. The war's opponents thought they were monsters. The war's advocates couldn't bear to acknowledge them. They became a collective monument to our national shame, to how foolish we had been, to the pain we had caused. They made us sad. We just wanted them to go away. It was their own damn fault. It was their problem, not ours. There was no sympathy. There was no health care. There were no veterans charities or politicians crowing about taking care of vets. They were too disabled to work, so we left them behind. They died on street corners and in hotel rooms, broken and alone, in wheelchairs with catheters, numbed on drugs and alcohol. Today, the exact same thing is happening to another generation of young men who've grown old and are killing themselves in numbers greater than all the lives we lost in the real Vietnam combined. They fought, and these 40 or 50 year olds must have fought so hard for so long, but no relief ever came, and we just left them there to die alone. And the media will come up with clever alliterative nicknames like Deaths of Despair, and the comedy shows will make fun of the pharma execs who got them hooked on heroin before they died, and the politicians will say they can save you in exchange for a vote, but nobody will actually do anything. American capitalism has become its own Vietnam. Like Vietnam, victory is always right around the corner. It's more money, a new car, it's a bigger house, it's that next promotion. Like Vietnam, victory never comes, because these things can't make you happy. The data tells us this, the people who've actually gotten that stuff tell us this. Like Vietnam, there's a great deal of cultural pressure and government strong-arming to participate exactly the way they tell you, even if it's not actually in your best interests. And like Vietnam, you will be left wounded. Pain is not weakness leaving the body. Pain is your body telling you it is sustaining damage. This is as true for pain in your mind and heart as it is your body. To fix this pain, we engage in self-destructive behavior, addiction, negligence, infidelity, and end up only feeling worse. Anger is a chemical response to pain, and unsurprisingly, a deep, ungovernable rage has manifested itself throughout all American society. We believe mistakenly that everything would be better if we could just destroy the people who don't think like us. And all the meanwhile, we can't shed the true source of our pain, our fucking jobs, because then everyone would think we were irresponsible losers and we can't even work less because that would mean buying less things, and then they'll start cutting jobs because everything we buy justifies somebody else's survival. Survival. Because if as a society we stopped rapidly replacing our cars, clothes, and furniture every couple of years, if companies built their products to last, if we tried to make our products last, most of the country would have starved to death by now. We dedicate most of our lives to a job, building skills for an industry, and one day a virus or a new technology will come along and wipe the industry out, and the only things we are good at will be irrelevant, and we will be left crippled just as if we were in a wheelchair, useless to the system. Because our lives do not have value if we do not have something to trade. And like Vietnam, the system will discard us. They will repo our cars, evict us from our homes, and liquidate our assets down to the clothes on our back to pay off the predatory student loan debts we aren't allowed to declare bankruptcy on. Just like in 08, just like right now. We are at this very moment sowing the seeds for the next wave of deaths of despair.